Привет, ребята. I have to say, sometimes I get fed up with all the ideas and all the squatting and all the stereotypes. Sometimes one just wants to sit on her balcony, enjoying good weather and a glass of wine. So April's full day is approaching, and I will be very disappointed if any of you guys try to prank me, because every year I get this. Oh, look, your shoes untied. Oh, look, your back is all white. Oh, oh, can I try too? Oh, look, your life is minuscule as against of incomprehensibility of the universe. Or, hey, somebody left a message for you, something about your mortgage has been approved. Okay, mom, cut it out, I get it, I will move out soon. Or, I would accidentally find adoption documents on my parents' desk. Ha ha, mom, this is so funny, you should leave it for the 1st of April. Oh, wait. Overall, Russian pranks are creative but cruel. In my university, there was a tradition of painting a piece of rail on a railroad in a black color, so the driver would think there is a piece of rail missing which would not be such an insane idea in Russia. But over the years, this would happen again and again, and drivers would just get used to it. I think they just stopped hitting the brakes. They just got this existentialism, like, okay, so there is no rail there, what do we lose here? Also, another popular type of prank is painting the puddles into a green color. I don't know who is supposed to be a victim of this prank, except for the environment. Another prank was that they tied tiny threads to common bathroom stalls doors in a way that they could lock the bathroom or unlock the bathroom by pulling on the thread while being outside the stall. In this manner, they locked all the bathrooms in a dorm. As a result, they were the only people able to poop in this building. So friends in Russia are special. They are very particular about whom do you call friends in Russia. Sometimes in a conversation you would say, so there is a friend of mine, well, actually, acquaintance of mine, and then go on in the conversation. And this is considered normal and even respectful, because you're protective of your actual friends, which makes them feel more special. Here in USA, it would be actually very offensive towards a person you said it about. Also, in Russia, they despise therapists and people who go to therapists, because usually your friends are your therapists. And if you go to a therapist, they say that you don't have any friends. But recently, I changed my mind about that. Because this type of friendship only works in Russia, where everybody is miserable and everybody needs a therapist. So you would serve as each other therapists in a friendship. You would connect through your misery. Uh, so a regular kitchen talk at night would go like this. You know, I didn't have sex with my wife for over two months. Bro, I haven't had sex for three months! And also, my boss is an asshole, he wouldn't let me go on vacation. Mine too, and mine also like decreased my salary, he made me pay a fine because I was late. And so this kind of talk works, but imagine if one of the friends was happy. You know, I didn't have sex with my wife for more than a month. Wow, my sex is amazing, bro. My boss is an asshole, I hate my job. I love my job, and I'm so happy. Ugh. This conversation just can't go like this. You just will feel like a burden to your friend, uh, always complaining, and you don't want to be the person who always complains. So you'd have to drink alone for some time, waiting for your friend to become unhappy again, so he would come to your kitchen and you would drink together again. Some people in Russia would say to that, what do you know about friendship? You're a woman. This is actually a common belief. Uh, they say that uh, there is no friendship possible when there is a woman involved. They say there is no friendship among women because they're ready to fight each other over a man at any time. Well, if you watched my previous episodes, you know that the woman-man ratio is not really favorable towards men in Russia. So yeah, sometimes women have to fight each other to get themselves a man, so what? The precise moment when the pressure is relieved, like here in USA, they are ready to be good friends again. And yeah, maybe Russia is a sexist country, maybe it's a little bit racist too, but hey, note, we're not the ones who came up with cocktails named Black Russian and White Russian. I was speaking of complaining earlier. Americans always complain. So they're coming to a cheap hotel, and here they come. This bed is not clean enough. The water smells. The breakfast is cold. Come on, you're sleeping inside under the roof, on a bed, your windows are intact, there is food, and there is actual running water, not just water, hot water. Russians never complain, well, never to a person's face, except when somebody cuts a line. There is this thing with Russians and cutting lines. I think it comes from a Soviet Union, where we had cards instead of money for food, and we had to stay in lines, and uh, the only thing that would separate you from having food and not having food is a fat old lady that would cut a line in right in front of you and get the last piece of bread. So the very first social skill Russians ever acquire is a skill to say, hey, fat old lady, 
Get your fat ass the fuck out of here. So have a safe April's full day. Don't cut a line even if it's a part of a prank. Пока, people. Wrong? Is this some kind of prank? What's wrong with you? Um, but there is no French in one woman, but they are always ready to fight each other for a man. Well, if you... What are you doing? Get out of here! Close the door! Get out! Get out!